everybody. This book is called What Lives in a Shell. It's written by Kathleen Widener Zeffold. Um, but it's actually about a lot of different kinds of shells. Um, snail shells, shells you find in the yard. And I wanted to skip to the part that is about um, seashells because that's what we're studying, right? We're studying animals that live in the sea. So this is the part that I wanted to skip right to on page 18. When you go to the seashore, you can find many different kinds of shells. You may see a crab walking on the sand. A crab has 10 legs. On, the front, on its front legs are two claws. A hard shell covers its claws and the rest of its body. A crab shell fits it like a suit of armor. The armor helps keep the crab safe from enemies. But just as you outgrow your favorite shirt, a crab outgrows its shell. When it gets too tight, the crab pulls itself out. Underneath is a new shell. So remember how the um, hermit crab had to go find a, a new shell somewhere else? The crab shell grows right underneath the shell it's already got. So it never really leaves um, its shell altogether. You may find snails buried in the sand. Some of them don't look much like land snails. Whelks and conchs are types of snails that are found only by the sea. Here are some different kinds of sea snail shells. These are similar to the ones that we saw in um, shell shopping. So these ones are in the Pacific Ocean, close to where we are in California. Um, a Kellett's whelk, a dire whelk, a Santa Barbara spindle shell, and a western rib top shell. And these are found in the Atlantic Ocean on the other side of the United States. A pale northern moon snail, a Junania, giant Atlantic pyrum, and a hawk wing conch. Have you ever seen a snail shell walking along on crab legs? A hermit crab has hard claws in front, but the back end of its body has a soft shell. Its shell is too soft to keep it safe from enemies. A hermit crab lives in an empty snail shell. After a while, the hermit crab grows too big for its shell. So he looks for a bigger one. Some are too big, some are too small. Finally, he finds one he likes. He throws away the old shell and crawls into the new one. Now, the new shell is his own. The snail shell helps keep him safe. So if it didn't have the shell to live in, it'd be too soft and too easy to, um, for predators to attack. You can look for clam and oyster shells at the beach too. Clams and oysters are animals. They have no legs. They do not have heads or tails. Their bodies are soft, but they're animals. These ones are clam shells and these are oyster shells. Clams and oysters grow two hard shells. The top shell and bottom shell look almost alike, so they make like a sandwich. The two shells are connected by a hinge. Scallop also have two shells. Here are some different kinds of scallop shells. And then you can try to make a shell like the scallops and oysters and clams have. You stay connected at the hinge right here in the bottom of your hand, and then you can open and close at the end. Most clams and oysters hardly move at all. They open up their shells to take in food and water. They close their shells tightly when enemies are around. Some scallops can swim. A scallop does not swim like a fish though. First, it opens its two shells, then it snaps them together quickly. This gets the scallop where it wants to go. So it opens it and then whoosh, it kind of pushes the water out to propel itself. When you find a shell, carefully look inside. It'll probably be empty. If a shell is empty, it may mean the animal has died or it's outgrown the shell and left it behind. If the animal is at home, you can watch it for a while. See if you can tell how it eats. How does it move? What does it do when it feels frightened? When you go, leave the animal where you found it. Animals are happiest in their natural surroundings. If a shell is empty, 
you can take it home with you. The